what's going on Anthony from Kyoto 3 back in with another preferred loving. Today is going to be the first preferred loving of the 2017-18 season for Friday night's match away to air. We're starting off in goal, pretty obvious decision here, uh, basically because we've got Devin McKay obviously but I don't think he's properly ready yet to play in first team games and especially be thrown in a game like this. So Jamie McDonald goes in goal, just before we kind of go anywhere else in the team I'm going to go with a 4-3-2 formation just because that's the formation that Lee McCulloch said. Um, he'd use probably throughout the season at the AGM. In at right back, going with Stephen O'Donnell. Um, had a pretty decent game against um, Livingston. I don't think he played to his best ability, but um, obviously as a friendly and it was their first kind of proper game as a team. So um, Stephen O'Donnell goes in at right back. I think he'll be one of the better signings this year. Um, I heard of um, one or two Path of Thistle fans that they would love to have him back in it. Um, they really missed him when he left to go to Luton. Um, the only concerning thing about that is he get released off Luton, like they're a League Two team. So I don't know if he's done any performed in there, and it, the Scottish game suits him a bit better. I'm not too sure, but Stephen O'Donnell is in at right back. Two centre backs. I'm going to go for first of all Kurt Broadfoot. Um, currently, I think he's probably our best defender overall, just because of the experience he's got, the level that he's played at. He's also played at big stages in Europe. Against some good teams, um, also play. I don't know if he played in the um, UEFA Cup final, but he was definitely involved in the squad. I think um, he was also won league titles with the Rangers as well. Um, previously played at St. Mons, so he does know the Scottish game really well, and he's also had a spell down in Rotherham as well. Um, so Kurt Broadfoot was in at centre back, along with Scott Boyd, who I heard scored against Rangers. Um, I'm recording this on Tuesday, and we played Rangers on Monday, I think. I think it was Monday we played Rangers, um, apparently he scored, we beat 2-1, um, but apparently Scott Boyd scored there. Um, and I really like Scott Boyd, I think he's a really underrated player. Um, Any time we played against Ross County, he always looked like a solid, solid defender. And um, I think since he's came to Kelly, he's shown that, so Scott Boyd also in at centre-back. And at left-back, and who else can you go for but Greg Taylor. Also, we signed Callum Waters um, the other week there, who scored against Livingston and um, had a pretty decent game, but Greg Taylor is in at left back for me, um, he's probably one of our best players, one of our best young players um, as well, so uh, hopefully he can improve this season, he had a really good uh, season last year, um, did make one or two mistakes, but also his, um, his game will progress when he gets uh, through this, uh, his time at Kamalak and hopefully he can go to bigger and better things as well, which I'm sure he will do, um, so Greg Taylor Scott Boyd, Kurt Broadfoot and Steve O'Donnell in the back four. I think he's a great leader. I think in the middle of the park is his best position. He, he could obviously, since um, Will Boyle and Johnny Byrne left, he's slotted into centre-back. But um, I do think his best position is in the middle of the park. Um, and I think he's a good leader as well. So Gary Dicker goes into centre-midfield, along with Alan Power, who was kind of quiet against Livingston, but he did make um, two or three decent passes that um, created opportunities for us and I think when he's fit as well I think he'll be a really good signing. Um, I heard like that Lincoln fans thought really highly of him as well so I, I think he was their captain for a spell as well so, and he's also played at a really high level um, not particularly like in the National League but he's played against Arsenal, Brighton, um, Burnley who um, they had obviously they get smashed off Arsenal but um, they beat Burnley, they beat Brighton and to the other teams at Ipswich, I think, I think they beat. Um, so, he's obviously come up against some really good teams, and um, fortunately enough for him, he's managed to get wins over them. Um, so, as I said, I think he'll be a really good player for us as well, and he slots into midfield alongside Gary Dicker. And my, fi my final player in midfield is going to be Adam Frizzell. I thought Adam Frizzell came onto a, a game at the end of the season. Um, I think he brings a, for, for being quite a small player, I think he brings a bit of aggression to the team. Um, along with Alan Power, along with Guy Dicker. I think this year we've got a really aggressive uh, and stronger squad than last year, um, especially with my adding the experience to it. So I think Adam Frizzell in there, with Alan Power and Gary Dicker beside him, I think he can kind of have a free roam in the midfield and um, join up with the front three, um, and hopefully we can get a press on the back four like that. Um, so Adam Frizzell joins Alan Power and Gary Dicker for me in the midfield. Up front, now, I'm, I, he hasn't signed yet, but I hope he does sign by f um, by Friday. Um, out on the left, I'd like Alex Sami Zadi. I he hasn't signed yet, but if he does sign by Friday, then 
I think he could destroy Ayr single handedly because he came on for like 10 minutes against Livingston and he done more than the entire team done for 80 minutes. Um, took on as many players as he could, go by every single player and he's a really good flair about him, really energetic and I think he could be a kind of cool valley for us this season. Talk to Cool Valley was actually at the Livingston game. Imagine Sammy's adding Cool Valley up front next season. What a partnership that would be. But um, Sammy's adding, as I said, I think he could be a really good player for us this year. I think he could bag us a few goals. Um, and I, as I said, I, I think he played really well against Livingston. Up out in the right, I'm going to go with Ronan McKenzie. Um, he's, me and my mates have started to just call him Marmite just because you either love him or you hate him. Personally, I love him. At times he doesn't really get an end product, but he does score goals in big games. Also, he scored last year against Aberdeen. Um, he's previously scored in the Ayrshire Derby as well. And I think he's got a really good work rate about him. I think he, he said that he said in an interview um, on the Kill YouTube page a couple of years ago that he thinks um, you get best up in the middle of the part, and I think that as well. I think he's got a good engine to him. I think he's a good. But I think he'd be a good box to box player. Um, but also he's got quality in the final third as well when he when he's um, when he can provide it. And up top. Just because of their lack of options we've got up front, I'm going to go with Chris Boyd. Didn't he have the best of games against Livingston? To be honest, didn't really do anything against Livingston, but it was a pre-season game. This is going to be different. It's an Ayrshire derby, big game, Friday night on the telly. Um, so the players should be up for it. We, we should see better performances for the players that we did see against Livingston. So I, that's my starting 11 for the Livingston game. Jamie McDonald, Stephen O'Donnell, Kurt Broadfoot, Scott Boyd, Greg Taylor. Adam Frizzell, Guy Dicker, Alan Power, and then up front, hopefully Alex Samizadi, if not, probably Jordan Jones, although he didn't feature against Livingston, so it could possibly be Callum Waters that goes in there, because that's what he played against Livingston out on the left. Chris Boyd up front, Ron McKenzie out on the right, so um, comment your team below, um, like the video if you've enjoyed it, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheerio. Boom.